to life Sticky flow When you hit this it's like hit and throw I treat these hoes Straight up like a mistletoe I kiss and go They put their attitudes on difficult I switch my game like a 60 switch And welcome How you doing tonight guys It's your boy Ace High and I'm here with a, uh, episode 9 for Loser Room. Um, uh, been a while since I've done the podcast. Probably about like maybe three weeks. Um, a lot of changes going on with the show right now. But, um, you know, still trying to give you guys feedback on what's going on. And, you know, just to keep everything up to date. And, and you know, I like, for, you know, I like doing this stuff. So, um, that being said... Um, sorry, I'm just checking something. Um, that being said, welcome. Uh, as you see, I'm about to spark up a dube. Come back on the blunt. Um, getting back to my papers again. Just because, uh, with everything going on with this whole, you know, CV-19 shit, it's just, simply not, you know, don't want to harm myself or get myself into worse harm, let's put it that way, just because I heard something, or I read something, actually not heard, but I read something, I actually read, I know, um, that, uh, pretty much that, like, you know, people who, uh, and this is good information for most people who smoke, uh, tobacco and weed mixed, um, there were talks about that, uh, well, I'm actually gonna put this a little closer so I can be a little comfortable, um, there was actually talks about that, uh, People who uh, mix their weed with tobacco, you know, as we like to say, spliff. Uh, people who roll spliff, smoke spliffs, whatever, um, are at high risk of catching some type of, you know, underlining type of lung disease or something of that nature that can cause the effects of more damage or, you know, in this, in this case, you know, give you... Uh, the CV-19. So, I don't know how true that is. I'll be honest, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I read it. Do I believe it? It could be possible. I mean, you know, you got to think about it when you smoke blunts, that is tobacco product. And then, you know, when you smoke weed with tobacco, I mean, like a spliff, like I said, it's, that's even just doubling up on the tobacco. I know a lot of people, when they smoke it with the weed and tobacco, I know a lot of times they usually smoke it out of the bong, a bowl, or they smoke a paper. Some people don't. They'll actually roll a fucking blunt, a swisher, and they'll fucking just, or a font the leaf even, and they'll just smoke it. So that's double the tobacco on your lungs. So, point is, right now, uh, we definitely need to, uh, I would say, try to definitely uh, cut back or try to have, like, you know, filtered smoking as much as possible or even cut back if you have to. Despite, you know, the fact that you may not want to or you may not think you have to or think you have to or like, the, you know, may not like it or whatever. But we do things we don't like, right? That's part of life. So give me a second. All right. So we have uh, a couple of things I want to talk about tonight. Uh, how's everybody doing without football and basketball and baseball and soccer and hockey? I know a lot of my Philly friends who are Philly fans. I knew you guys. I know you guys are upset. I know you guys are very upset just because, uh, you know, y'all was in the playoffs. Y'all was about to go to the cup, you know, and, and then boom, all this stuff happened. So I know this. That's very upsetting for you know a lot of the Philly uh, Flyer fans out here near my tri-state area. Um, me, I'm a Devils fan, so for me it's like whatever. But um, being that I'm a big football fanatic, it's uh, that's heartbreaking right now. And basketball, you know, because right now as we speak, we should be getting you know we would have been watching the the playoffs, the finals, and all this shit. And it's just like damn, it's like weird not having that right now you know I mean, it's real weird you know like it's weird that like 
you know, there's no basketball, there's no sports. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know how a lot of you guys are taking it. I know a lot, you know, I know on TV they're playing, uh, <coughs> they're playing a lot of the uh, <coughs> old games and, which are, of course, classics, you know, and, you know, who doesn't want to watch a good classic game? <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. But um Yeah, so you know, but the fact that we don't got any present time games is just like it's, it's heartbreaking. It's like uh it's just so annoying, man, to know that we don't have no sports, man. No sports. You can't even watch spring training, nothing, like nothing. I mean I watch wrestling as a lot of you and maybe some of you know and the people who do well, you know, people who are watching and will catch up to watch this. I, I mean, I'm a big pro wrestling fan. And I know, you know, that's still going on, thank God. But even then, you know, that, that gets a little, not boring, well, kind of boring, but just because, like, maybe, you know, that week they probably can't grab a superstar that's like of your liking you know you might be seeing the same guys for the next three to four weeks <clears throat> just because a lot of them are not wrestling because of the situation which i mean like i said that's their rights and i, I respect it health first you know i get it so that's what i said like i whatever i can get from it i appreciate it you know what i mean just because there's nothing else on i'm not big on reality tv I'm the type of person I'd rather watch old shit. I mean, right now, if you would look at my TV, the funny part is I'm watching, well, not really watching, but, you know, I like to keep background noise and background scenery, so. But right now, my background noise and background scenery right now is, is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, I'd rather watch old shit. You know, I, if I'd rather watch something old before I watch a fucking reality show. You know what I mean? And then, like I say, if it's a good reality show, I'll, I'll catch it. You know what I mean? If it's something good. But it's got to be real good. You know, like Stone Cold's Broken uh Skull Ranch, love it. That's great. I'll watch it. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, what was another? One? Oh, what's that John? The tattoo show? Like when it had, not the not that black ink shit. I don't like that shit. That that's to me that's that that's that's soap opera shit. You know what I mean? Like I don't like that shit. You know, especially like those people. Like you know what I mean? They they they, they I don't know. I be feeling like sometimes like they make themselves look like idiots. You know what I mean? And and then some of the shit I see like you know when they show, when someone does like a little meme or clip of the show. And I'm just like, oh, it's like drama on drama. I'm like, oh, God, no, no, I'm cool. I don't want to watch that. Like, I'm all right. You know, that's like the love and hip-hop shit. Not big on that shit. I'm big on hip-hop. I love music. I love hip-hop. But I'm not big on the shows. You know what I mean? I don't want to see no love and hip-hop shit. That shit's, that's another show that's just full of drama. What was that one? Kardashian? That Kardashian show? Don't watch that shit neither. That shit. I just saw, even though they did, what, they had a recent fight, I think, or some shit. I saw the clip of that. Fucking Kim, uh, Kim got her ass whooped, though. I have to admit. Kim got her ass whooped. She can't fight. Kanye got a bitch that can't fight. Ain't that some shit? I don't think Kanye fight either. Who knows? I mean, he probably got heart, but I don't think he could really fucking fight. You know? But again, like I said, who knows? I'm not, you know, I'm not here to judge. I, you know, I'm just quoting or just saying right now. But point is, I saw that video and that shit was funny. She, she, uh, what was it? Kendall, I think her name is. I don't be know. I, I be guessing these names. I, I'm pretty. I'm like eighty percent of the time. Usually like, not really hundred percent sure if the with the name are, but I'm usually eighty percent sure. But like, yeah, I think the other one was Kendall. She was fighting or whatever. She fucking she slapped the shit out of her. She fucking gave her a one two piece like poopy. <laughs> I was like, damn. I mean, I give Kim. She she was standing eating them Jones and hitting her back, but like. I feel like she, you know, I feel like the younger sister had definitely had more cleaner shots, but I can't, yeah, I can't watch those shows, man. They're too, uh, even like, you know, and I didn't go lie, I caught myself watching like shit like Total Bellas, like, you know, like I said, I know it was a wrestling thing, so like, that's the reason why I really watched it, and too, I love the women wrestlers, they're fucking no offense, man. They're, they're sexy, you know, I mean, this is beyond, honest, they're sexy, but other than that, I really don't watch so proper shit, you know. I mean, like I said, you, would, you know, want to consider wrestling reality and fine, whatever. But you know, all the other shows, nah, I'm not cool on that. I'd rather watch a scripted show, Walking Dead, or you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, anything of that nature. But like, just a reality show, just people just doing dumb shit, drama shit. Nah, I'm cool. You know? I barely watch Jersey Shore, and I'm from Jersey. I got forced to watch that show because my ex at the time, she she loved that show. Oh my gosh, she used to love that show. She probably still does love that show, you know. 
but forced me all the time to watch this show. We gotta watch Jersey Shore tonight. And I ain't gonna lie. After a while, you you know when you when you it's funny because when 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 your mind actually gets caught into you know smut TV, you know that type of drama TV, you know you tend to get open to it. And you're like, oh, this shit is good. And you're like, fuck, man, I gotta see what happened next week. What happened next week? You know what I mean? So like it was times I called myself like yeah it was actually good and she was like you ready to watch it babe I'm like yeah let's go put this shit on for a little blunt you know what I mean and then we we'll watch the show and shit but I, that was like I said that's when I was younger you know I'm going 30 now so it was like I don't watch any of that shit I'm cool <laughs> I'd rather watch a YouTube clip you know what I mean like some some interesting shit or just something on YouTube before I put on any of that shit but teach his own I'm not like I'm here to criticize I'm just here to give you my thoughts. That's all it is. My thoughts. Everybody has their thoughts. Everybody has their opinions. Everybody's entitled to them. You know I mean? Who am I to tell you you can't say what you want to say? But I, I can't tell you, you know, don't take offense to anything I say because I'm not uh, I'm not an offenseful person. I don't try to I don't try to offend people purposely. So don't take anything I say offensive. I will be honest and I will be blunt, but I won't ever be disrespectful or or anything like that purposely. So, anyway, like I said, back to the sports conversation. It is just crazy to know that we have no sports. We have, like, no movie theaters, no entertainment, nothing. Everything is fucking shut down. And then there's talks of saying, oh, 30 more days. Ah, Jesus Christ. Listen, as long as it don't go into the football season, I do not give a shit. I'll do whatever it takes. But don't let it go into the football season. That's all I can ask. That's all I want. Don't let, don't let this fuck up football. I cannot. It's really bad enough. And I know those guys put their bodies on the line, and I, and I appreciate those guys. Man, those guys that get paid to do that shit. I wish I was getting paid to do that shit. But those guys that do that shit, man, they do that shit for a living and do it well. Because even a guy that's like a third string, I don't give a fuck. You made it. You're a third stringer, but you made it, bro. You made it. You have a contract in the NFL. You made it. I don't care what anybody say. You may be third string. You may be ass. You may be a butt-ass third string. But you made it. That's all that matters. You're getting paid to sit that fucking bench and make in whatever thousands of dollars a year. So all the only thing you should need to be worried about is not, not you know, learn not to blow it. Other than that, Get your bread. If you want to be prosperous, be better than, you know, first work on your craft. Get better. That's the whole point of being in the NFL. Be the fucking best you can be, right? Who wants to give up? But point is, man, don't let this shit get into the NFL, man. I can't. I can't. I, I wouldn't know what to do. It's pretty bad. Like I said, like, that's pretty bad enough that, like, we only get them for a certain amount of weeks. And I know they just passed uh, the new, uh, what is that thing? That thing's called APA or some shit like that or some organization, some contract to have with some group for the players and whatnot and apparently like now we're gonna have what is it uh an extra like what is it an extra team in the playoffs i think it is some shit like that i believe i think it's an extra team in the playoffs and um i could double check just in case but i believe it's an extra team in the playoffs and then um an a extra week I think it is. Um, let me see. Let me double check. Uh, think. Let me see. Yeah. There you go. Okay. CBA. Let me hold up. Yeah, because I know it's like some new shit. New CBA. All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so in 2020, it's going to be 16 game regular season, right? With postseason expanded from 12 to 14 teams. All right, starting in 2021, the NFL has opt option to expand the regular season from 16 to 17 games. If when NFL moves to 17 games, each team receives a bye week in place of a fourth preseason game, which is fine. That's that's actually cool. No one needs to really play preseason. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. 
Now, let me explain that. As, alright, it's different when you're in high school, right? You need those those preseason games. You need those scrimmages. You need those, you know, those head-to-head -head exhibition games, right? Same thing in college. You need those. NFL, you don't need those anymore. There's no need to have exhibition games so someone can get hurt. There's no need for it. You drafted guys in the offseason for a reason, right? Within three weeks, you should already, not even three weeks, because what? Fucking, I mean, you know, offseason starts for them. As soon as the draft's over, they're already in training camp. Well, maybe not right now because everything's going on, but usually around like what, May? I would say around like what, May and, 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 and June? Definitely, of course. You know what I mean? They're training. So, from May, June, training camp, and then usually, you know, preseason's around August, just, you know, beginning of August, around there. So, you're telling me around those times, from from May, June, all the way to August, and, you know, or even September, really, because, you know, the last week of August is usually like the cut, you know, the last, we're off the cuts and trade, you know, trades before the season starts and shit that, you know, teams make. So you're going to tell me that you don't have enough time to figure out if that person was worth the trade or worth the draft or worth the pickup. You know what I mean? Like, that's more than enough time. You don't need those extra four weeks. I mean, you don't need that extra week to make it four weeks. Fuck the preseason. I mean, I watch the preseason just because I like to see who can be on the up and up. You'd be surprised. You know, of course, there's rookies out there you want to get some reps in. You got some veteran on the team that might, you know, need the rest just because he needs to show that, you know, he's still, you know, active. You know, see so see if he still can still got it. Is he can can he keep up? You know, I get it. It's 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 worth it for those reasons. But you know, when you think of like oh preseason, to me, I think of like guys in high school, college, pee wee. You know what I mean? They need those reps. When you're in the NFL, man, you're there for a reason. They look, they know you got it. They know you that person. You know, that's how I look at it. Like once you make it to the league, not saying you need to go lazy and be like oh fuck it, I'm the man and be all cocky and shit. I'm not saying that, but once you made it to that league and to that point, like, fuck that extra fucking week, you know what I mean? Like, especially if you're giving us an extra week in, in the regular season, yeah, take out that that fourth week in preseason. No one gives a shit about that fourth week. You give them extra time to train, you give them extra time to relax. Who wouldn't want that? And then you still get a fucking nice check on top of it. Can't beat it. Maybe some of those guys don't like it. Maybe some of them do like it. Who knows, right? I mean, depending on what they make. But I was also told, um, which I can probably find it right here since we were on here, um, was also told that like they even took out the drug uh, drug rules. So here's all right. So here's all the things that's coming with this, right? So here's this. That's the that was the season structure I just told you, right? With all that, and here's the an annual revenue split. In 2020, owners received 53 percent, right? Players received 47. In 2021, all the way to 2030. Owners receive 52%, while players receive 48%. So, you know, they, 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 they came to a better agreement for the players. Cool. Even though owners still get a good, you know, actually they're going to get a look. You know, their owners, they're going to get more. But they try to keep it even as possible. You've got to respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. Somebody say, oh, well, 50-50 is even. I, but you also got to think. Are you owner? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you got to think about it. Owner, you know, everybody has to understand that there's hierarchy. There's the tubby top of the pyramid is always going to be the owner. That's who, that who owns it. That's who runs it, who put money to have that, to have you on that team. You know what I mean? Or have you there, whatever it may be. Everybody, everybody under them got to fall in line. That's just how it goes. It's a, it's a hierarchy. It's just how it goes. Um, so that's cool. That they get that 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 base percentage, so pretty much everything. Let me see here. And it says here. All right, so let's let's read what it says. It says from 2021 to 2030, right? The base percentage of annual player revenue is set at 48 percent, irrespective of whether the regular season consists of 16 or 17 games. However, in the event the NFL moves from 16 to 17 games, players will receive a media kicker. An additional share of revenue based on the league's overall growth in TV contract, which is a bonus. A 60% increase would boost annual players' revenue to 48.5%. Uh, 
the boosted player share could go as high as 48.8% with a TV revenue jump of more than 120%. So you can roughly up that and say they're going to make their 50. You know what I mean? They're going to make, they could, they could possibly make their 50 to 49. <laughs> That's great. That's good. That works out for them. I, I, I think that works out for them. I, I wouldn't think that's a problem. Here we have player salaries. So let's see here. Immediate increase in minimum salaries. 1 million medium salary by 2029. So by the 2029, it's got to be a, a million dollar minimum. That's crazy. So that means a venture at the minimum is going to make a million dollars a year by 2029. Sign me the fuck up. I'm in the wrong field. I need to get back. I need to get back in shape. Who want to work me out? Because shit, by 2029, I want to be making a mill. Just, <laughs> just sitting on the bench. Um, any player carrying current above league minimum contracts into the new CBA will receive a bonus equivalent to one seventeenth of their salary. If slash when the NFL moves from 16 to 17 regular seasons, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's that's hey, I mean, because the last CBA jump and I what I've heard and what I kind of you know knew from you know from the old contract they had, the players was getting shit. They were getting fucked. They were getting fucked. That's how I look at it. Some players was benefiting, a lot of players wasn't. So it felt uneven for a lot of the players on around the league. So to me, this sounds even. Especially for, like I said, the guys who are, you know, lower guys or mid, you know, the mid depth chart guys. Helps out. It works out for them. You know what I mean? It works out. The drug policy. Now, that's where I wanted to get to. Now, this is where we wanted to get to. So, let's read what this says. All right, drug policies increase emphasis on clinical care rather than punishment. No suspension for player receiving clinical care. Significant reduction of penalties for marijuana use. No suspension for positive tests. Annual testing limited to f to first two weeks of training camp. Higher threshold for positive tests, 150 grams instead of 35. Violation of law of probation generally will not resolve in suspension. Wow. I did not know that. So the shit I read from someone's post earlier was true. Wow, I did not know that. That's cool. That's, that's pretty dope. No suspension at all. None. I wasn't in the post. It was a uh, shout out to my bro Dave. I, I forgot to remember now. Forgot. That's how you know I get high. I forgot we were smoking yesterday. And he said that shit. Damn! Wow. So even if they fucking have 150 grams, oh what was it? Wait. They're still positive tested. So 150 grams instead of 35. Violation of law for, for possession. Generally will not generally will not resolve in suspension. So that means I think that generally will not resolve would basically mean like if you're just carrying and you're just smoking, you're just a smoker, you're just a fucking pothead in the NFL, and you're not over the fucking weight limit of it, you're fine. It's when they start catching people and they start throwing people under the fucking bus, or you know, you got a little drug ring going on, that's when they, you know, you're fucked. You're fucked. Which is like, come on, at this point, <laughs> gotta give it up, man. You know, I, I never understood those people, and I don't want to talk bad about nobody, but I never understood that. I never understood why people go to something great like the NFL, or they'll go to NBA, wherever, boxing, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. And they will do the dumbest shit. I mean, we could talk about the Michael, you know, Michael Vick. Still one of my favorite quarterbacks to this day. Even that when that situation happened, I still had mad love for him. I still, you know, was like hoping for the best because I was a fan, and I know that people make mistakes. I'm a dog lover too. I like dogs. I love animals. You know, what I mean, I have no problem with dogs, and animals, and I would beat someone. You know, no offense. Like if I saw Michael Vick and I saw him do that, of course I would probably would kick his ass for doing that. What the fuck are you hitting dogs for? Why are you treating dogs like that? 
But I also believe that, you know, people make mistakes too. People need a second chance. I also believe that, you know, you did the crime, you did the time, all is forgiven. You know what I mean? He did his time, he lost his checks. That's a, if that ain't a devastating blow, I don't know what is. And then to reestablish yourself back in the NFL with two other teams, you know what I mean? To try to make a comeback run. like And he did. And it wasn't like he was he had bad runs. They weren't great runs either, but they weren't bad. They were good. They were good, decent runs from being, you know, being out for, what was it, four years, I think he was in jail? Was it maybe three years? So, but point is, you know, that people deserve second chances. And just the fact that, like, you know, when people go to jail and these people just, they're, they're you like, yo, aren't you rich? Aren't you famous? Why are you in here? Oh, because, you know, I wanted to still be a gangster. Or, oh, damn, you know, because I still wanted to sell drugs and shit or give somebody money. So, fuck that. Why don't you just take that person out from this situation? It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. You're in the NFL. You're making banging fucking money. It's not like you're making little pocket change. Like, you're making great money. Great money. Perfect money. People, money that people would fucking would do anything to get paid like that for something, they, you know, for something they love to do. Like me, I love football. Loved it. I would have loved to get paid millions of dollars to do it. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? It's just crazy. It's crazy when people do that. You know, that's like I read today. Uh, it came out today, breaking news and this type of thing, type of situation and with uh, Chris Johnson. Everybody remember Chris Johnson from the Tennessee Titans? He was a running back. He used to call him, uh, what was it, CJ2K, if I'm not mistaken. Chris Johnson, so yeah, because he ran for 2,000 yards in 2009, I believe. And uh, same thing happened to him that I just read today. Some Someone snitched on him about possibly being being a part of setting up a uh, a murder. You know, he, he set up a murder to happen. And, and you know, he's, you know, gang affiliated. And, and he, you know. Gave, gave people money to, to run this and run that. And it's like, damn, everybody snitched you out, bro. Even after the fact that you're not even in the NFL no more, but and you got you still got snitched out. I mean, we don't know they're true. That's the, just the allegations. But if they are true. It goes along with what I'm saying now. You got to learn, to, you know, when you get to that point in life, you got to learn how to just put the shit away. Even the people who are doing it now at the fucking, when you're an adult, come on, man, put this shit away. I don't, and I don't try to disrespect nobody's shit. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm just saying, like, in general, when you get to a certain point in your life, in your career, your life, you know, or just, you know, wherever it is, you have to learn to be like, what's more important? You know what I mean? The life that I've been grinding to set up, you know, and, and work so hard to set up, or... There's other shit that I've been doing so long that, you know, there's about time that you sometimes gotta just put it away. I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes you gotta put it away. Whether it's anger, whether it's old neighborhood, bad friends, whatever it is, sometimes you have to just put it away. You have to just move on. You have a different life now. A better one. You know what I mean? A better one. Something that anybody would kill to have. You know, so it just kills me. Yeah, a lot of these guys get put in these situations and lose their money, lose friends, women, cars, kids, whatever. They lose lose it all, man. They lose it all. It's just crazy. But we're not done with the NFL. So a lot of things are going on uh, besides the free agency, besides the draft class. Which should be exciting. I have to admit, the draft class is definitely, definitely exciting this year. It's a lot of good players. And I ain't gonna lie, I didn't get to really keep up too much with uh, college basketball last season. Um, basketball, sorry. College and uh, football last season. But um, a lot of good players. I watched some of the Columbines. A lot of good players. Was that kid CD? Was it Sneak? Was it CD Lamb? That kid, whoo, he's something else. That kid is special. He's fast. He got hands. 
I think he's pretty tall. I think he's like, what, 6'2", 6'1", something like that or some shit. Pretty tall. Fast. It's unbelievable how fast he is. Now I don't want to see he's the fastest. He might I think he did run like a 4'3". I don't know if that was the fastest in the combine, in the 40. But I think he ran like a 4'3", he said. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, that was nasty how that sounded. That eh, something like I was about to throw up. <coughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a lot of, a lot of good kids. And wide receiver, I think the, in my opinion, I think the wide receiver uh, class is actually real good. Even down, I mean, literally down to the, just jumped on lighter. Oh, I don't want to bend down, damn it. What's that? Hold on, give me a second. Damn it, that thing went all the way into my desk. Hold up, now I gotta go to my other side of my desk and grab my fucking lighter. <laughs> uh, damn it, I hate when that happens. Then now I gotta go find that damn lighter. It's like my good lighter, too. I just bought that one. But, um, shit, I was tracked up, but the damn lost the damn lighter. They, they got some shit. Do something, right? Only something that fucks up your mind, makes you forget something else. Um, oh, yeah, the drive class. NFL draft class, yes. Deep, deep in class this year, I think. Um couple couple names. I know quarterbacks pretty I don't want to say they're thin, they're pretty pretty decent, but not like the yeah, not like the wide receivers this year. There's like I mean there's guys down to the fucking fifth round you can get. This one kid, what is his name? Jalen Rigoro? Rigoro? Rigoro, I think his name or something like that. Somewhere let me see if I can find his name. I think like Jalen Rigoro or or Jalen something. Let me see if I can find him. I think you have a Jalen. Or Jalen. Or something like that. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> yeah, Jalen Rigoro from. What's that? T TCU? Yeah, TCU. Horn Frogs. Yep. Jalen Rigoro, Jalen Armand Rigoro. He's 5'11, 194, right, from TCU. This kid is another one. I mean, he's pretty good, I think. And they are projecting him to come out of the fucking fifth round, fourth round, maybe the, the earliest third, but at first he was fifth. Then I heard he was fourth, so who knows? You know, it could be a late third round, early fourth, could be a late fourth, early fifth. So it's it's uh it's that's that's a, that just lets you know how deep we can go. I mean, cause last season he only put up forty three receptions, six eleven yards, six hundred eleven yards, five touchdowns. Nah, it's average. Not even it's like more of a slot receiver. But that's what makes him good because he can be a very great slot receiver. Imagine a guy like him going to the Patriots. Well, not with not well now we're not with Tom Brady being there. But let's say if they can get somebody in there that can at least play up to a a, a fucking great caliber of, of a quarterback. I'm not gonna say elite, but at least you know a great quarterback. <laughs> so let's say he gets to that point. I mean, they you know Belichick finds somebody and they get this kid. Jalen, Jalen Rigoro, Rig, Rig, Rigor, Rigor. Sorry, I said Rigor. I keep saying Rigor. I keep saying Rigor. Rigor, Rigor, or Rigor, Rigor. I don't know. Some shit like that. R e a g o r, Rigor. I'm gonna say Rigor or Rigor, Rigor. Maybe, maybe A is silent. I don't fucking know. These weird names. I have a weird name. And I, I, I know how it feels. But um, yeah, he, he's, a, he's got potential talent great he could be a great slot receiver if he's put on the right team let someone like drew Brees get him in the fucking fifth round imagine how he's gonna make him look imagine a guy like fucking tom brady could get him in tampa bay in the fifth round imagine how he's gonna make him look i mean because they ain't got no slot guy over there really who's over there mike evans beast fucking big bro over there you got uh godwin beast fast Maybe not as fast as everybody. I, I mean, I think his speed is actually underrated. I think a lot of people think he's slow. He's really not that slow, in my opinion. But 
OJ Howard, Cameron Brait, tight end of the tight end. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they have a slot guy. I mean, like, unless they start using, like, guys like Justin Watson, if, he, if and that's if he's still on the team. I don't even know if he's on the team still. But I remember they had, like, guys like Justin Watson. And I know I know Perriman's not there, for sure, Perriman. I think he went, I think he went to another team, if I'm mistaken, where he got released, one of the two. Uh, so, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they have anybody really on that team. So, you can definitely do that. I mean, imagine Tom Brady with that kid. Fifth round pick, fourth round pick. You just they got a steal in the draft. <laughs> that would be sick. Even my team, I would love my team to get it. I mean, we just picked. I'm a Packers fan, so you know, a lot of you know that, a lot of you don't. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. Love my team to the day I die. Uh, some you know, this year's off season, I kind of was upset. Yeah, we picked up Kristen Kersey. I mean, he's a decent guy, good, good, decent, good player. But I mean, injury prone like a motherfucker. We, you know, got him for cheap, yeah. But he's gotta be healthy. You know what I mean, we it's very really bad enough we got last season. What killed me was that last season we could have went, man. We could have went, and I don't want to make this about a Green Bay rant of how would have, could have, and should have. But we could have went. The fact that. Fucking 49ers ran down our throats the way they did with their third string running back made me realize like we had no run defense whatsoever. We took it lax from the start of the game. They punched us in the mouth and we stood there just holding our fucking hands with our, you know, holding our fucking hands to our mouth. And the reason was because we had no fucking linebacker core. We have the Smith brothers, yes. We have Kenny Clark, yes. We have Gary, which I was hoping they would at least put him in more that, that last season. They didn't. They didn't put him as much in as I wanted him to. Unless he got injured or some shit, who knows? You know, I don't remember him getting injured, though. If he did, I don't remember. Like I said. But to know that we picked up, you know, we let go of Blake. Went to the Giants. Cool. Whatever. I mean, I like the Blake, but... Obviously, he didn't fit our scheme, or he didn't want to fit our scheme. So, one or the other. And to know that we were that close to a championship, man. Ugh, last season just kills me. Pissed me off. We lost to the fucking 49ers, man. And they lost. Like I said, I'm glad the Chiefs won. I'm happy they won. I didn't want the fucking 49ers to win. Fuck them. Pissed me off. And they, that's, it's like, that became my, man... I hate them because they, they stopped us before from getting to the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? When when, when, K, uh, when Colin Caper Pickle and shit, when he beat us to get to the fucking Super Bowl, that shit pisses me off. Like, we always lose to them, or we always lost to the fucking, you know, to the Giants that one year. We lost to the fucking Seahawks the one year. It's like, fuck, man. We could have been already, like, a couple of times Super Bowl champs. You know what I mean? Because I know those times we'd have won, we probably would have won. We definitely would have won. At least two of those times, you know what I mean? We should have, or we would have. Anyway, this offseason, like I said, is pretty good. It's very a lot, a lot of interesting stuff happening. A lot of teams picked up a lot of good players. I mean, like I said, I wish my team would have picked up somebody good, but, you know, whatever. You know, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> but, like I said, the, the draft is going to be pretty deep. It's going to be pretty, pretty deep when it comes to players, especially wide receiver. You know, a lot of teams need a lot. Of, uh, a lot of teams need deserve positions, but what kills me is that people be thinking, you know, when they see a star in college, right, they become a fan. That's how most most of them happen, right? You become a fan, and then they automatically think their team needs them. Like, no, it's not how it works. Like, my, like I'm in, a, I'm in a Facebook chat, or uh, not chat, but like a page, you know, group page, whatever, Green Bay page. You know, it's a bunch of good people there. You know, I'm not talking shit about them, but good, good, a bunch of good people. But you get your ones, it's just like, yeah, we need to grab a fucking quarterback in the first round. Why? Why? Because you think Aaron Rodgers is washed up. He's not washed up. He just needs fucking time in the pocket. He needs, you know, another weapon. It's not hard to fucking figure out when you got one person on the fucking side named Devontae Adams, who's a fucking beast, 
It's not hard to think and be like, double him. It's not hard. And being that, you know, he's not the tallest guy. He's only 6'1", six 6'1". Six six he's not the fastest. He's quick, but he's not the fastest. He's just a great route runner with, with, with great speed for his size who has magnificent hands. But if you put two people on him, you know, he's not the strongest. He's not Megatron. Megatron can do that shit. Megatron can monster three fucking people at one time. Why? Because he had the fucking size. He had the speed. He had the fucking ups. Devontae Adams was ups. But, you know, not enough to where he can moss probably two people. He might get it off if, if Aaron put it on the money. And, and he's there to make the catch. And it's cool. But it's not hard to just be like, double team your, their star player, their star wide receiver. Double team yeah, I love Lazard this year. It was great. Alan Lazard was our other receiver. We he, he got the ball a couple times. I think I'm missing someone else. I think we had another wide receiver. He was throwing it to this year, but he probably didn't make a difference. And then we picked up Funches in the offseason, which is, you know. I'm okay with it, I guess. Like I said, he was a cheap pickup, so it's whatever. You know, you need a receiver, especially like I said, like I'm saying, we need the star players. We need players that we can, you know, that can fucking play. You know what I mean? But it, it, it's just crazy how that shit goes. Anyway, so they also came out this week, uh, a couple days ago, uh, I want to say on the weekend, they came out with a all all decade, excuse me, an all decade NFL team. They came out of all, uh, it's all you know, decade NFL team. And um, this list, I had to talk with, I had to post something on my Facebook. I had uh, a couple more, a couple more good, uh, Good friends, you know, I went to school with and played football with growing up. Uh, Eagle fans, fucking bums. Um, they're Eagle fans, but um, you know, I I respect them. Of course, they're my friends. I grew up with them. Most I don't get that. I don't give that much respect to Eagle fans. Just the people I'm cool with, because <laughs> I can't stand Eagle fans. But I love you know I got mad love for them and, and the ones I consider my friends that are Eagle friends. But um. They, you know, had a post something the other day, and they, they posted something back, and they kind of what I said. But what I posted was, in this all-purpose, I mean, this all-decade team, I don't see DeMarcus Ware on this list. Okay, he did, you know, he retired in 2017. But I don't see him on this list. I see Patrick Will on this list, and he, and he retired early himself. And I didn't see class Clay Matthew on this list. Now I'm not trying to be that guy. Oh, you're a Packer fan, that's why you want him on there. I'm not. But the fact of the matter is that he played what eleven seasons? I want to say eleven to twelve seasons. Yeah, eleven seasons. And he played ten with us. He had one bad season with us. That was his last year with us. He only had 3.5 sacks. I think he was injured, if I'm not mistaken, that year. So that's the reason he had low sacks. If I'm not mistaken, that might have been the year also they kept getting his ass with penalties, bullshit penalties. They kept saying he was roughing the passers, and he really fucking wasn't. He was just playing normal fucking Clay Matthew football. So that year was a bad year for him. And then he went to the Rams. Got eight sacks and played his ball. Now, I don't want to hear the excuse that, oh, but they want people who played through the whole decade, you know, from 2010 to 2020. Well, if that's the case, then why Patrick Willis on his list? Because let me see, wouldn't he retire? I'm pretty sure he retired in the middle of 2000 of the, of the decade. Let me see. And I love Patrick Willis. I don't ever talk shit about Patrick Willis, but I'm just just trying to prove a point here. Patrick Willis.
Yeah, I was right. 2015, like I said. Career ended at 2015. So he retired earlier. He retired earlier than the Marcus Ware. The Marcus Ware retired in 2017. Now, I'm going to look up stats for Patrick Willis. I love Patrick Willis. One of my favorite players. I would never disrespect the man. I'm just, like I said, trying to make a point. So let's see. Stats. Career stats. I when I got up. Zoom in. Because my eyes ain't that good. 2007, he was drafted, right? All the way to 2014. Because in 2015, he retired. In total, tech, uh, yeah, total games, he played 112 games, which is amazing. He played 112 games. Combined. Hold up. Okay, yeah. So, total tackles. So, pretty much tackles by himself. Right? Tackles by himself. He has uh, 732. Assist tackles was 218. Right? That's total in his career. Which is great. So, combined those, you have 950 tackles in total. In his career, which is crazy. He has 20 point, he has 20 and a half sacks, so 20.5, zero safeties, 50 deep pass deflections, which is good, eight interceptions, which is good, two touchdowns out of those eight interceptions, the long zone was for 86 yards. Great stats, don't get me wrong. Possibly even future Hall of Famer stats. Who knows? Because people respect them. They respect his game. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no to his. Uh, if they said, you know, does he deserve to be in it? Yeah. I mean, he didn't stay long, but the amount, of, you know, the amount he stood, he 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 put up those numbers. You know what I mean? Now, he was a middle linebacker, right? I know Demarcus Ware was an outside linebacker. Marcus Ware retired in 2017. Let's see his career stats in those years. From 2005, so two years earlier, to 2016 season. So, now like I said, he's an outside linebacker. So, he won't get as much tackles as, as Patrick Willis will. Patrick Willis is a Mike linebacker. He's mo you know, he's supposed to eat. You feel me? He's supposed to get the most food. You feel what I'm saying? But still, to know that you have an outside linebacker in DeMarcus, DeMarcus Ware, who didn't make the, de the, the decade list, to my injury, he didn't make the decade list. Total tackles, right? For an outside linebacker. By himself was 501 tackles. He had assist tackles 153. Total tackles, total tackles combined of all those tackles. He had 640, sorry, 654. Tackles total combined. He's played 178 games to get those tackles. Now sacks. He has 138 and a half sacks in his career. So from 2005 all the way to 2016, that he played football, he made 138 and a half sacks. That's crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. And he still had 25 pass deflections with three interceptions, one of those for a touchdown in his whole career. So he does not make the deck 18. Like I said, don't get me wrong, Patrick Willis, loving the death. He is deserving. Would not, I would not deny that. Let's look at Clay Matthews. Let's see what they say about Clay. So from 2009 to 2019, which is last season, combined tackles, he has 
by himself, 383. Assists would be 136. Combined total would be 519. He's played 156 games to get those stats and tackles. With also 91 and a half sacks. 43 pass deflections with six interceptions, two of them for touchdowns. He, had, like I said, don't be wrong. Patrick Willis had a lot of sacks by himself in those years, and he deserves to have status and, and, and credibility out this world, hands down. He is literally one of my top favorite middle linebackers. If I have to put him in organized order. I would say he's literally one of my favorite middle linebackers. Definitely in my top five, possibly even top three, middle, uh, just linebackers, not even middle linebackers, just linebackers in general. But when you have a list that says on defense, and this is a defensive list, right? Clayus Campbell, Cameron Jordan, Julius Peppers, J.J. Watt, Geno Atkins, Fletcher Cox, Aaron Don, Aaron Donald, sorry. Nama, I can never say his name right. I don't like this guy anyway, but Nama, Nama Khan Su, I just call him Su, but whatever, I try to say his first name. Chandler Jones, Luke Coochley, Khalil Mack, Von Miller, Bobby Wagner, Patrick Willis. That was from the D line all the way to the linebacker. Patrick Willis being the last one. It's like, I don't have a problem with this list, but I have a problem with this list. <laughs> and the problem I have with this list is that they don't have two, the one of the two best outside linebackers who has played the game since they, since the, since they got in the league. From when 2005, when the Marcus Ware came in, he maybe didn't ball out crazy, but you heard his name in games, like the Marcus Ware. Oh, he, okay. He's good. I remember. I remember that shit. I remember playing 2K5 and being like, yo, I'm going to trade for him. I'm going to trade. I'm gonna, I want to put him at fucking outside linebacker. Like, I remember that shit. He was a beast. Maybe not like a crazy beast like he was when that, throughout the rest of his career because that one year he had, what, 20 and a half sacks? He had 20 and a half sacks, I think, I believe, in one year. I think it was like 2008, 2009 or some shit. And that was the year I believe I think Clay even had like fifteen, or or it might have been a year after or a couple years after or whatever that he had like 15, 17 sacks. So that's what I'm saying. Like these are guys that 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 expanded the role in their position. They just went, they went from being outside strong and weak linebackers to fucking blitzing linebackers or covering you know covering linebackers slash blitzing linebackers you know to do it all sideline to sideline. That's crazy that they didn't make the list, bro. I just, I don't know. Like, don't be wrong, Clay's Campbell's a beast. I know he's at the end. Julius Peppers, the end. JJ Watt, the end. You know, Jim Atkins. Okay, cool, cool. But then it's like, in the long run, the linebackers are great. You know, you can't argue with it, but it's like, but when I see Patrick Willis' name, I'm just like, but well, wait a minute. Like, he retired in 2015. And yeah, he has a lot of fucking tackles. He has a lot of tackles, almost a thousand tackles. Almost a thousand tackles. He does some shit. But in in eight interceptions, even crazier. I think in what I said, four touchdowns and shit. Two four touchdowns. But to know that you have one that gave you know one guy in his whole career has hundred and thirty some sacks. The other guy has ninety one sacks. It's like, come on. Don't be wrong, Chandler, like, I can't argue with Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones is a fucking beast. I think his career, he has like 100, I think, some sacks too. Okay, cool. I, I could, you know, with that. Luke Hoochie's a good one. But I can never say his Forgive me for how I say these names wrong. I've always been a bad person at pronouncing names. Especially when you got weird ones like that, like, you know, Coochley. Coochley? I guess that's how you say it, right? Coochley? If I actually look at it, I could probably say it. Coochley. I say I always call him Colucci. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, Luke Colucci. That nigga, he a beast. Um, Khalil Mack. Like I said, he's cool. 
You know, there's another guy with high sacks. Bob Miller, another guy with high sacks. And, and tackles. And it's, it's just hard, man. I, I, I don't know. I love Patrick Willis, but I ain't going to lie with him. They should have done one of them justice. And if that was the case, at least do DeMarcus Ware justice. The man has 130-something sacks. I'm pissed that Clay didn't make it, but damn, at least give the man DeMarcus. You no, know, let him get that, man. Cause that was crazy. Then you have the D-backs. You got Patrick Peterson, Darrell Revis, Richard Sherman, Eric Berry, Earl Thomas, Eric Widow, Chris Harris, and the Honey Badger. I remember the I mean, I can't argue it, but then even then, like, they're D-backs. I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like I feel like there was other people that around in the last 10 years that probably could have been better than maybe Darrell Revis or even Patrick Peterson. You know, even Eric Whittle. Like, I mean... I don't know. That's just my opinion, man. That's my opinion. Offense was cool to see, though. You got Tom Brady, you got Aaron Rodgers, you got Frank Gore, you got Marshawn Lynch, Deshaun McCoy, Adrian Peterson, Antonio Brown, Larry Fitzgerald, Calvin Johnson, Julio Jones, and then Darryl, Darren Sproles, Rob Gronkowski, Travis Kelsey, Jason Peters, Tyron Smith, Joe Staley, Joe Thomas, Jahari Evans, Logan Mankins, Zach Martin, Marshall Yonda, Alex Mack, and Maurice Pouncey. That's not that I didn't have no complaint with the offense. At all. At all. I mean, like when we were on Drew Brees was a beast, but I mean ooh, that's so good. Drew Brees was a Drew Brees is a beast. Not even what. He is a beast. <laughs> but can't be mad at this list. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady as the quarterbacks. Fucking crazy. Frank Gore don't, still kicking. I don't. Even, I think he's still on the team. Is he still with the Bills? I think he's still on the Bills still. If he's still with the Bills, he's going to kick still. That man still wants to play. He's one of those running backs that's like Emmett Smith, man. He's like, I'm playing until my knees start screaming. When my knees start telling me how, that's when he's like, I'll leave. Until then, he is not going anywhere, bro. Until it's it, as long as the team is saying, Frank, I will pay you X amount of dollars to play for my team, he's like, when is training camp? <laughs> he's asking, when is training camp? As he's signing his name on a dotted line, he's asking, like, when is training camp? All right, cool, cool. He not, listen, beast. Frank Gore's a beast. Marshawn Lynch, another one. Beast. I wish we, uh, I remember. I remember when Marshawn Lynch got drafted. If I'm not mistaken, we already had got Aaron, I think. Yeah, we already had got Aaron. He was already a couple years in. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Aaron and him roommate together. I think he might have been a freshman already, and Aaron might have been like a fucking junior or a senior or some shit. So they knew of each other somehow, some way. And when he left the Bills, I think he was playing with the Bills when he first came in. When he left the Bills to go to fucking Seattle, I remember thinking to myself, how fucking dope would it be if we can make a fucking offer? Because at the time, we needed a running back. We didn't have none. I think we might have had Ryan Grant, if I'm not mistaken. And he was just a fucking one-hit wonder. He had one great year, and then after that, it was just like... And then he got injured. Yeah, I think that's... I'm pretty sure that's who we had, Ryan Grant. I think it was Ryan Grant. I'm going to say Ryan Grant. I know it wasn't Eddie Lacy yet. Because by then, uh, Seattle already had Lynch. So it was definitely might have been Ryan Grant. And I remember just thinking, like, oh, how fucking fly. We have two Cal players playing for the Packers. A booming, a booming, as I like to call it, booming 
as a booming fucking throw. Because that's how it was going to be. Hand off, give it to the boom. Boom, he was going to boom you and keep it fucking moving. And then not play action and give it the... Phew. Give it that shit, give it, throw it downfield. And we didn't make the offer, and I remember fucking cursing up a storm in my house. What the fuck? We didn't fucking make an offer. Aaron, and I remember did with Irina, uh, uh, what was I think it was Rena Sports Illustrated, and it was talking about how Aaron Rodgers wanted, I think it was Sports Illustrated, or it was something on the internet, or I might have heard on ESPN, it was something. But I remember it was saying, or I was reading one or the other, and I remember it, it was saying that Aaron Rodgers wanted him to come there. And he kept telling uh, McCarthy, or he kept telling, I think it was like I think Ted Thompson was the owner or some shit. He was telling one of those people, was one of the fucking big head honchos, like, if you bring in him, if you bring him in, he's like, I will control him. I will, I will make sure he is okay. And he kept telling him that, bring him in. Bring him in. Aaron wanted him to come to the fucking Green Bay so fucking bad. Because he knew, yo. Aaron wasn't stupid. Aaron saw the talent in the boy. He played with him. He knew. He's, he's like, man, if we can get him in the fucking field with us, we're going to go to chip after chip after chip. And I'm not saying that because I'm just a Packer fan. I'm saying that because at the time, we had the weapons to do it if we would have just brung in the fucking proper run game. And that was Marshawn Lynch. If we would have got Marshawn Lynch that year when he fucking left the Bills, yo, we would have been fucking cheap. We would have probably been at least, at least one extra Super Bowl win with him. Maybe two. At least two appearances and one win, bro. We would have got there at least twice with him, yo. I know for a fact we would have. I know for a fact, yo. If you just got him, if you just got him, we would have been fine, bro. So fine. It, it sucked. And I know it pissed off Aaron because it just showed to them that they wasn't ready to take his word yet. You know, they were still getting over to Brett Favre and... It was years later, you know, but they were still like, ah, uh, you know, get us a ring first, kid, and then we'll, we'll, we'll trust your word. And no, he did after that. He fucking started breaking records. He took him to a Super Bowl. He won a fucking ring. And then now, you know, even then, they, they, they fuck him over sometimes, and it pisses me off. But, um, yeah, Marshall Lynch, beast. LaShawn McCoy, beast. I remember watching him in fucking Pitt. You know, coming from the Jersey area, Pittsburgh, you know, you get all those games and shit, all the Philly games, all the Pennsylvania games. And watching him play was like watching Reggie Bush play. It was crazy. I, I was watching, I'm just like, yo, it's like a fucking Reggie Bush. Only thing was, he was actually, he was more physical in college. Up in NFL, he didn't get too physical. Some plays now, like, I think as he got older, he got, he brung that, he brung it back a little bit, you know? But college, he was a little bit physical. And he would, but he would blow by guys, man. It was crazy how he would just take flight, boom, 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 just make a cut, and it was over. Once he made one cut, he wasn't catching it. You better had a header. You better had took the cut, head start or something, because you was not going to catch him. He was not going to catch him. It was impossible. So seeing him on there is like that's cool. I like that because I seen him come in and. and Ball out and Philly was stupid. Philadelphia was so stupid. That Chip, uh, Chip Kelly, Chip, Ke uh, was it Chip Kelly? Uh, or yeah, right, Chip Kelly. That was his name, right? The coach. Fucking okay, that guy. He fucked that whole organization. That organization. Up, boy. He fucked that shit. Up. He gave out fucking McCoy. He gave out. Jackson, he gave out fucking everybody, bro. Everybody must go. That's exactly he kept bums. That's what killed me. He kept Macklin, bum. I thought he was a bum. I knew he was a bum. Missouri, he was okay. And I saw him play a couple games in Missouri. And I remember playing, you want to watch him on TV. And I was just like, 
back then, like I said, back then I was heavy on college. Now I'm not too heavy no more. Not not like I used to be, like I said, because it's different nowadays. I really can't get into too many college games. I would love to get into them. I just don't have the time. Back then I didn't have time, nothing but fucking time, you know, as a kid. But back then I used to watch him play. And I was like, yeah, he's okay. Then he came to the NFL, like, okay, he's, he's you know, all right. Eagles, all right, you know, whatever. I ain't an Eagles fan, but I already get to see him. These get to see, see somebody I've seen in college play around here, and then they see you know, just watching. I was like, oh, he's a fucking bum. Now, this guy's a bum, dog. I'm sorry. Even though he almost had a thing, he think he did do a thousand yards one year or two years, whatever. But and even if he did, had three, four years of thousand yards, I still consider him a bum. I just didn't. I don't know. Just NFL for me, he didn't have nothing worth wowing me that was just like yo Macklin was that dude bro Macklin was like even Deshaun Jackson I'm be real I'm I was I'm even now I'm still not a Deshaun Jackson fan. I think he's fast as shit. I think he's talented. You know, I mean his speed is fucking blazing. Like it's a, it's a talented speed. But as a player like hmm, he's you know just a typical fast guy. Once you lay the wood to him, he won't catch the ball no more. And that's what happened to him. I'll never forget that when Dunton Robinson with Atlanta Falcons fucking came crashing down. And Dunton took a hit. A lot of people don't, like, it's like they underestimate that little guy. He's 5'10", maybe 5'11", 195 or 205 around there. He can hit, though. I seen little Dunton hit a couple people when I used to watch football, watch him playing for Atlanta Falcons and, and a couple teams that he played for. He could hit. Little nigga get hit. It was crazy. He was blamed the wood, but when he met someone that was the same size or just as smaller than him, which was Deshaun Jackson, he hurt himself. That's how hard he hit him. Like he hurt Deshaun too. Like he hurt him just as bad, but he hurt himself too. And the way he hit, I remember I was watching that shit, and I was I think I was on the phone I'm watching it. I was talking to somebody. And I heard that drum, I'm watching it, and it sounded like a car wreck, bro. It sounded like two cars hit, and it was like, whoosh, like that, that clashing sound, that, oh, that lovely sound of fucking pads colliding. Yo, I was like, what the fuck? Like, he killed the man with the ball, bro. He killed him. But like you said, I wasn't a big fan of just on Jackson either. I was just like, eh, he's just fast. I respect his speed, you know? I don't know, you know, he has a reason to be cocky, he's fast as shit. Who wouldn't be that cocky if he was fast as hell, knowing that no one can catch you? Once you get open, no one can catch you. You just got to make sure the person you, that throws it to you has the arm. But the problem was, for me, is that once you shut down the deep post and the streaks, all he has left after that is verses and fucking, you know, screen passes. That's all he got. And even then, once you start shutting that shit down or you start getting on the quarterback's ass and you start sacking him, he ain't getting shit. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't like receivers like that just has nothing but speed. I like guys that you can throw the fuck up and they're going to get it. I was a big Calvin Johnson fan who, who he's on this list. I was a big Calvin Johnson fan. Love Calvin Johnson. Watching him lost two people was amazing. The best thing that you can ever fucking see. This guy just jumping in fucking midair, just fucking, oh, <laughs> he just grabs the ball. He just, he would just grab it. Oh, give me. He would fight the ball, take it from the air. Like, it was like a bully in midair. Like, he would bully these guys. Just give me the ball. Oh, give me that shit. Going to the touchdown. Get out of my fucking way. Fuck out of here. Like, yo, he was monstering people, bro. Loved it. Watching him play was amazing, yo. Watching him play was amazing. Randy Moss, same thing. We used to love watching Randy play. But watching Randy play is a difference. It's a big difference. Watching Randy play was watching art. It was like going to an art gallery and just looking at art. And you're just looking at this art piece at the wall. And you're just like, just, just admiring it. Like you're just like, wow, that's amazing. You know, I was like, oh, that's so cool. So calming. So, like, it's just, even when he plays against you, you can't even be mad at it because it's art. Like, you got to appreciate it. You know what I mean? I, I'm a Packers fan. He's a Vikings guy. 
He played us twice a year for fucking what? Seven years? You know how devastating that was for me every time to watch a play? But I had to appreciate it. I, I had to appreciate it. Even though I was a Packers fan, I would just sit there and watch and just be like that guy in the museum just looking like, wow, that's a master. That's a masterpiece. Is that what artwork is? Like, watching him do his thing, man, it was a crazy thing. And because Randy, Randy Moss, man, he had speed, but he had, like, this, this, his cuts, man, his burst route, like his routes when he burst out of them drones was just crazy. He was just, he'll hit you with something, boom, boom. And you wouldn't, you, you would still be reacting to the first move. Like, when he hit you with the first move, boom. Yo, you done fucked up. Like, when he hit you with that first move, boom. And you fell for that shit. Like, you thought he was going to go in on you. Oh, it was over. He was already, he was already on, he was already behind you. He was already, like, running down the fucking field. Ready to catch a touchdown. Like, bro, it was crazy. So that's why I say there's a difference because watching him, watching him catch the ball and then watching guys like Calvin Johnson catch the ball was different. So you watching Calvin Johnson watch the ball was like watching, was like watching a, a, a street fight. It was that type of entertainment. Like, it's like, yeah, like, like, oh, like, you know what I mean? So we getting punched in the mouth. Boom. Like, oh, like, yo. Like, him grabbing a one hand was, like, basically someone got knocked the fuck out. Like, blow. You know what I mean? Him him catching a touchdown on two people was, like, him, you know, jumping somebody by him, Like, jumping two people by himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, it was just, like, one of those, that, that type, it was, like, an entertainment type of factor. It was an entertainment type of art. Randy Moss had the, had the painting full, like, just... Artistic, fucking Calvin Johnson had the the brutal. Oh shit, this is entertaining, dog. He fucking be well. He fucking him up. Like it was different, you know, it was different. And I loved it. Ah, loved every moment of it. Then you know you got guys like Derek Kron Gronk Gronkowski, who's by the way. And this might come to a shock for some of you. He signed with WWE. And over the weekend, WrestleMania weekend, he is now your 24-7 champion. Yay, Gronk Kotowski. It's funny how he leaves the Patriots. They don't get a fucking Super Bowl, but he leaves and he still gets Super Bowl. So that just kind of tells you right there that, you know, he's the reason why they won the Super Bowls. <laughs> like, without Gronk, did. You know, I know some people are like, fuck you, it's not true, it's Tom Brady, it's Bill Check. It was all three, in my opinion, but it is kind of funny to think that, like, damn, as soon as he left, they, they ain't winning no some more Super Bowls. Like, and now Tom left, and it's like, oh, yeah, they really ain't going to win no, no more Super Bowls. Patriot fans got fucking spoiled, man. They got spoiled. Now it's time for y'all to be like normal motherfuckers like the rest of us. Fucking, you, know, you see how shit flipped up, right? <laughs> so, yeah, you got guys like Gronk. Kelsey. So it's like whatever. At that point, it's like, okay, yeah, that's deserving. And even Kelsey, it's like, I'm trying to think if someone else in the last decade was probably, I mean, maybe they didn't probably put up the amount of numbers he has, but he has put up some numbers. He has put up some good numbers, but. Mm, I would say Gates, because Gates was still playing in the last 10 years, but I don't know. Maybe not. He didn't probably put up numbers like Kelsey, though. I don't think he has. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's just, you know, this list was cool, but at the same time, not having Clay, not having the Marcus Ware kind of just, uh, I don't know, even, uh, the other Kelsey, the, the other Kelsey brother, not Travis, but yeah, Jason Kelsey, right, I think that's the name is, I'm right, Jason Kelsey? Or, or something like that. I always forget these guys' names. They sound like good with names. But, um, yeah, he, you know, Travis Kelsey's brother, plays with Eagles, center. Said the same thing. Feel snubbed. 
No, this whole list is like the whole list is bullshit. Pretty much, that's what you're trying to pretty much say. The whole list is bullshit. But yeah, I know a lot of people don't agree with it. Like, oh, like I know a lot of people don't agree with like Aaron Rodgers probably being like, oh, it should be Tom Brady and Drew Brees. I mean, possibly. I mean, Drew Brees is fucking one of the top, you know, record holders right now with a lot of shit. But so is you know Aaron Rodgers is there too. So you know, it's like whatever. The art, running backs, you can't argue with the running backs. There's no art. There's no arguing with the running backs. You can't argue with the running backs. I think everybody can agree that all the running backs on the fucking decade list is, is deserving. Frank Gore, Marshawn Lynch, Deshaun McCoy, Adrian Peterson. Can't go wrong with that. You don't even need a fucking... They didn't even put fullback. They're like, fuck the fullback. <laughs> no fullback has been fucking good since when since Michael... What was it? Mike... What was those, uh, the dude charged back in the day? Neil? It was like Michael Neal or some shit like that. Guys from like Mike Allstott and all those guys like that. Like, fucking... It hasn't been good fullbacks in a long time. If we get, like I said, forgive me, I'll be getting some names wrong, but it's just because like I said, I'll be, my mind, I'll be forgetting people's names. But I do remember who I'm talking about. We were there. Not bullshitting. But, um, yeah, so this list is pretty crazy. You know. To know that we ain't got sports is pretty crazy. It's depressing, guys. No more sports. More sports. Man. In other news though, let's go with the sports hockey for a little bit. Another news. Um so apparently uh two Russian aircraft flew over Alaska and people got I guess spooked out about it or something happened. Apparently, what I was reading from the article um, was that uh, they were doing like their, they, they, they pretty much do this shit every time. Um, they do this shit to like pretty much protect their type of like, like to, what was it? not even protect, what was it? To, uh, let me see, I can read it here. It was like they do this shit. Pretty much they, our, our, so our, um, uh, our people, you know, U.S. spotted two Russian aircraft around Alaskan like air defense. You know what I mean? And what they do is they 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 patrol around that area. That now, mind you, they wasn't. It was around the air defense of Alaska. They wasn't really in Canadian or American Air Force technically, like you know, uh, you know, borders. They technically wasn't in our border. They were just doing their usual shit of, you know, patrolling, uh, patrolling fucking, like, the sea, I guess, like, submarines. So, quote said, you know, quote person said that, you know, they also did it to, like, see if we're still on our guard, you know, see if we're, like, you know, even though we're under COVID and all this other stuff. Or I'd like to call it CV19. I don't like to call it the name because I know they got restrictions. So I'm trying to respect all the guidelines right now. But um, it's just crazy that you know that it's just like you know, checking us, you know, see if we're on our guards. Still, like, come on, man, we got a lot of shit to worry about right now, man, we ain't trying to, yeah, we still on our guard, obviously, we caught y'all, like, you know what I mean, like, but, um, it's just crazy with all that shit, bro, like I said, I don't really don't gotta try to get into too, too much, just because I'm, I, I feel like that shit's like negative talk, you know, we don't need enough negative, we don't need enough, enough of that crap around here, you know, doesn't mean like the whole world's going crazy and you know, all you can hope is just like this shit dies down as soon as fucking possible or hopefully it fucking I don't even know just this shit needs to just hurry up and go the fuck away <laughs> I know a lot of people going crazy in their house especially with all these new fucking little regulations we can't call them laws because not laws but Definitely these new regulations that they got us doing and following right now because of this shit is just crazy. And the fact that a lot of these people who are working, 
you know, the essential, quote-unquote, essential employees that are working, the ones that are risking their lives, you know, we are grateful, and I know I'm grateful, and I appreciate you people that's out there that's doing this, especially if you're not getting the extra pay, and especially if, you know, you are working in crazy conditions, all I can say is I salute you and I appreciate you, because nobody should go through this, you know, nobody should definitely be going through this. But all the food I that's working in the hospital and all that stuff, definitely, like, you know, keep yourself safe and appreciate you every step of the way, you know. And I hope you, I hope, uh, I will only hope that God and the universe fucking blesses you with everything you ever deserve for doing what you're doing now. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, you guys deserve it. Going through what y'all going through. Fucking 16-hour shifts or whatever the kids would be. Fucking nonstop fucking calls and go and go and go probably barely get a chance to fucking eat like it's crazy bro but fuck that next topic I, I hate I hate I hate to want to shit but I do want to appreciate you know give a shout out to those people that are uh working in those situations man I definitely appreciate you because like I said right now not to be private in my life but you know my uncle actually is uh actually going through that right now and apparently he's not making it or you know, doing too well which i mean we'll keep a positive mind that he's going to make it but at the same time trying to be realistic that if you don't you gotta be prepared for the worst but point is you know i do wish him well and i do wish to all the people around the world who do have it well and i do see a lot of people that are trying their best to help the situation so let's keep that in mind and all in this in this darkness of time, we all gotta try to um, come together, you know, more now than anything. Just because right now the world could use a neighbor. So you know, something like Mr. Rogers, but you know, it's pretty much true. But um. Final Fantasy 7 drop, baby, for all my gamers out there. I cannot wait. I want to play it. I ain't get to play it, and I ain't going to play the demo. I don't want to play the fucking demo. I want to play the game. I want to get it myself and actually play it because I want to play it. <laughs> Shit's going to be dope. I know it's only half the game, too. I know. I, I've kind of been through that for months now because I heard it. A while back on an article I was reading on. But it should be good. The graphics are great. I mean honestly I'm still playing seven now, the uh, the original on my PS4. I bought it a while back. Wow, while back. Um and I I bought it a while back, so I've been playing that, but you know, seeing like now today's graphics and knowing that it'd be remade, it's like, ah, you don't even want to play the old one right now. Like, even though the old one's still great, and you're like, oh, I want to play it again, but it's like, you get anxious. You're like, fuck, I want to play the fucking, I want to play the new one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to play the new one. Especially now, they're going to have a lot new more shit. They're going to have a lot more, a lot more stuff. You know, they're going to have a lot more scenes in the fucking game or probably side you know obviously you're gonna have side missions and fucking probably new characters who know they might have a new character to play with like that'd be pretty cool so i'm definitely looking forward to this shit like this shit should be yeah i'm definitely looking forward to it <laughs> i ain't gonna lie to you like I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it just because this shit should definitely be cool as hell can't wait Fucking lately, I'm my games. I've been playing fucking this Warzone and Call of Duty with my friends. And if I ain't playing that, I'm fucking playing. Well, I've been playing playing Mad because I'm in leagues, but I'm gonna just fucking stop playing leagues so right now. I'm gonna probably do my last season and delete that shit because I get tired of fucking Mad. I could go all day talking about Mad right now because I fucking hate Mad. Can't stand Mad. Literally only play it because it's my only it's the only football game. When 2K come back, oh my god, I can't wait. I am smooth 
never, ever, ever going to buy a fucking Madden game with you can come back. Never. They lost. They they only gained a customer only because I was not allowed to buy the game I wanted to buy. That was it. And it's like, and it's like, you, you know, you could tell they, they were scared of competition. You know, if those of you who remember back then in 2005, when Matt bought the fucking license, that's why when 2006 came around, I was no fucking 2K6, NFL 2K6. If they bought the fucking NFL license or they got a deal, contract, however you want to fucking call it. And they didn't want the competition. They were scared. They knew the game that was $20 that had better graphics, better in depth gaming. Better game presentation, better game control, and more realism than any simulation football game made at that time. They were scared of competition. Because they everybody knew that 2K, NBA 2K was blowing fucking NBA Live out the water. The only people that was buying fucking NBA Live was the old heads. Dead ass. That was the only people that was buying NBA fucking live. Old heads was buying NBA live. That was it. People that was like fucking, that grew up in you know, NBA live 94 and 5 and 6. They were buying that shit. Big ass dude came out. Niggas was buying the NBA live. Still. Because, I mean, people were buying both, but. They knew they wasn't going to keep up with that shit. They knew the NBA live was not going to last for long. It wasn't for the fact that they started adding the dunk contests and all that shit later, like in 2000, I think it was the NBA 5, when Carmelo was on the cover, and that's when they started the, the dunk contests and this shit. That's when people were still like, all right, I'll still buy NBA Live. Because even me, I was like, damn, I'm going to buy NBA Live just because I want to fucking play the dunk contest and All-Star Weekend, and that shit's cool. So I would get it. I'm just going to go another one, fuck it, fuck it. So, I would get it. Just for that. But in all, I hated the fucking game. I used to like, if anything, you know what I did like that they did came out with, which I mean, I, and even then, I used to like it more on 2K version, but the college games. I used to love the college games. Like, I love college football on, you know, NCAA. Loved it. I thought, as, even to this day, I still think NCAA is better than fucking Madden. NCAA football is better than any fucking Madden game put out. If NCAA was still coming out with games now, this it would be still better. It would still be better. That's the side part. It would still be better. People would still rather fucking play NCAA than rather play fucking Madden. People still play the Dub One Four. Is it for PS3? The I think NCAA Fourteen. I think that's the one. He would still play that shit. He was fucking going crazy in that shit. Though. They got seasons on season. Playing like thirty years strong, bro. Nonstop. It's crazy. And you know how that shit happened. But I used to play the I used to like playing the, the, the college games. And I had I had the little the NCAA March Madness. I used to get the March Madnesses. If I didn't get the March Madnesses, I just get the uh, the two K college what was it? I think it was called college hoops or two K NCAA or college hoops or some shit like that. For for the two K version it was called something else. But it might have been called uh, the NCAA two K something or or it might have been called NCAA College Hoops 2K something, some shit like that. And um, so I used to get both of them. Like, I used to switch. Let's put it that way. It's kind of like switch it up. Like, one year I would get March Madness, and I'm like, all right, then the other year I would get, you know, college one for 2K. But then I started like going for 2K just because it was like the presentations was better, the dunks was better, the fucking. Just the, the, the layout of the game, like when you fucking, you know, do the online for the story, you know, like the, the franchise mode pretty much. I like that they thought it was better. 
the presentation for each week when you fucking, you know, have like, well, there was like Brian Gumble or one of them. Well, the one I had, the last one I had in it for PS3, and he had Brian Gumble or somebody who was talking and he would just do the presentation. I was like, oh, that's cool as so hell. Like, so, like, you know, it got to that point. But, because I was always a 2K guy. I was always a 2K guy. I had Dreamcast and everything, bro, growing up. Well, my brother had Dreamcast, so technically it was his, but, you know, we shared. <laughs> So, you know, we had 2K. And we had all those games, bro. We had 2K football, 2K basketball. And I used to fucking go ham on them shits, bro. All the time. And then when they finally went to the PS2, I was like, okay, 2K on the PS2. Word, I'm with this. I loved it. Switched over because, you know, Dreamcast was dead at the time. So now you just had, you know, you have your PS2, PS1. And then Xbox came around later and then he had the fucking PS3 and Xbox 60 and it was just like oh shit you know console wars again <laughs> but point is it was fun times you know good games so it's like saying the sports if you're a sports guy I used to love it like you know, I used to love playing the sports games back then I think my favorite college game I had to say would probably have been in my opinion 05 NCAA 05 with Reggie Bush on the cover or not on the, what was that one? Well, yeah, yeah, the were Reggie Bush on the cover. That was my shit. And with, I believe, the, the 06 or 07, the one with the Michigan player on the cover. I forget who that who was that on the cover. Who was that person on the cover? I know it was a Mich- I know it was a Michigan a Michigan Wolverine player, but I think it wore like 16 or 21, one of the two numbers. I think it was 21, though. And uh, that was a good one, too. And then I think I played, I think I might have played 08 or 09. And then after that, I stopped. I, 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 couldn't, I didn't go no more with that one. But then I did start playing more college game, college basketball. So I was like, fuck it, whatever. You know, I couldn't get both at the time. I was like, man, I only can get older, you know what I mean? You know, I was into more other things. So I was just like, all right, I can't just get both fucking games anymore. I got to choose. So I went to more to 2K, and then they stopped making all college games. I'm like, fuck. I was stuck with fucking Madden. <laughs> I was stuck with the bullshit and, and 2K, which I mean, I like 2K basketball now, but it's still like, mm, it gets boring after a while too. It's just like, it's like, it's kind of repetitive, same shit every year. That's why I get, like, I don't even try to, I, I didn't buy it this year. Thank God. I didn't waste my money. I was like, I ain't, I ain't gonna buy it. Bought Madden though, waste my money, unfortunately. But, yeah, man. Well, I'm about to head up out of here. It's been real. Uh, I know tonight was a little bit more about sports, so you know, any females that do listen, I apologize. I try to make it more interesting for you guys next time. With that uh, definitely try to mix it up. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to uh, definitely get more people on here. I'm trying to, uh, you know, have some guesses on here because uh, I do have a a mindset where it's like I, I you know I have a lot of questions for people I'm a very question I'm a very questionable person like I want to really question everything like I have a question for everybody's mind mindset or theory because like you know I, and it's like a lot of people think oh, excuse me, like the debate it's not really like the debate because truthfully I just I like to learn other people's shit I want to know what you think you know I wanted to pick you I want to I wanted to see what's in your fucking mind you know I want to see what you think because what you might think might be interesting. It might be interesting to me. Or it might be where I might be, you know, it could be uh, not just interesting, but like let's say it could be interesting, but it could also be like, it could be, who knows, life-changing at some times. You learn something, you're like, fuck, like, that's how I always felt, and now I know. And now you might see some clarity out of it. Something might change in your mind where you're just like, it changes your whole aspect, your whole life of it. Everything you ever thought of just switches out. And you're like, holy shit. You know, this whole time I've been fucking been thinking like this. And really, I should have been thinking like that. So, like I said, it, you know, I'm trying to definitely get some more people. Um, in a sense, like, you know, try to definitely get some guesses on here. Um, definitely been quarantined. Just trying to be quarantined as much as possible. Hopefully we get this shit over with. Because... A nigga miss work. <laughs> I like doing this shit, of course. You know, I love doing this shit, but I miss work. I ain't gonna lie to you. 
But, you know, I've been doing a lot more, um, you know, as you tell, I've got people who are listening. I, I have been doing a lot more, you know, videos and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm definitely going to be coming with a lot more videos soon. Um, I actually got to do the uh, uh, another review on the Dark Side of the Ring episode. So that should be coming soon. And definitely going to be doing some reviews on, like, uh, Lock and Key, which I'm still watching, trying to pace myself with it, because it's actually really good, um, but I'm trying to, like, actually, like, kind of pace it and, and, you know, jot down things and really, you know, talk about it, because it, it's a really good show. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, you should watch it. It's pretty good. Uh, other than that, school and working. I mean, it's, well, working at home, just since, like, my little projects and personal projects that I'm doing put out there so just always try to keep keeping the uh, keep in tune you know what i mean keep in tune as much as possible i'm trying to keep it entertaining as much as possible so <laughs> uh, other than that guys just like i said just be safe guys i know it's crazy out there uh be safe love one another be positive stay away from the negative and you know use this time now to you know reorganize yourself reorganize your life you know, if you're out of work, rest, you know, use this time to sleep, get some rest in your body, re-energize your, your mind, your brain, your soul, and, and, and you know, organize your life a little bit, and, and, and take out what's what's needed, and, and, and keep what's needed, and, and, you know, even if it means changing some something out of your circle, or, or you know, switching up a, a you know, how you eat or, you know, switching up how you may, how you may look at something. Maybe you start going to church more. Maybe you start reading more. Maybe you, you know, you started, uh, let, you know, not stressing more. Maybe you're stressing less, you know, cause you're doing yoga or you're eating better or you're running somehow, some way, or you're in your house, you're still working out. Keep it up, you know, keep up the positive work and, and, and try your best to just, you know, Keep living. Keep it living. But like I said again, keep love and, and keep posit- positivity around you as much as possible. That's all I've been trying to do. I'm just trying to keep everything positive and you know, even though like, I ain't gonna lie to you, shit, you know, we could get weeds getting low. <laughs> but uh you know, even then I try to keep it positive, man. I try to, you know, keep a mind good and always keeping my mind that I got good friends and I got good family and I got loved ones around me that do care and you know I just gotta keep my mind going that's all so all I can tell you guys just do the same man you want to get through this don't worry so alright stay locked stay tuned you know keep on the channel as much as possible you know don't forget to like subscribe and you know rock the bell like I always say alright have a good night Ace High, sign out of the loser. Peace. Do you feel it yet, man? Lose a life. Sticky flow. When you hit this, it's like hit intro I treat these hoes straight up like a mistletoe I kiss and go, they put their attitudes on difficult I switch my game like a 60 switches